These are dangerous people. Roman, I'm concerned about you. I went to war last night. I've been dealing with depression ever since I had a lesson that can never You don't just walk away from this. I can never take a lead, I can never I'm not walking away. I can finish this. Each one of us is greater than the worst thing we've ever done. Jamal Finkley. Yeah. My man got the gear on, man. Wait, you got all right. Yeah, Jamal Finkley, Black Tree TV. Anytime you're ready. You gotta be one of the greatest actors of all time. You're definitely oh, in my thanks, book. Man. Thank you. But I wonder, like, what was the actor that made you get up and get into it? Like, was there was there somebody that you seen perform? You know, I see. Jam I saw James Earl Jones do Oedipus the King at St. John the Divine Cathedral. I saw a Taxi Driver. I saw uh, uh, just actors on stage that you wouldn't even know. I was like, how did they do that? I'm still seeing people. I saw Mark Rylance, and I was inspired. You know, you 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 find out that yeah, maybe I can do that, and then you see those that really can do it. You know, I never wanted to be an actor, but uh, ignorance is bliss. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You, would you have played basketball? I know you was playing. playing I played ball. a little basketball. Look, I started rubbing my knees. Soon as I just <laughs> <laughs> psycho somatic. I, yeah, I started. <laughs> I started playing a little basketball. I, I was all right. I'm from a great basketball town, my Vernon, New York. We had a lot of great players. Uh, I played a little football, but I didn't make the NFL. But my son did. Yeah. But uh, you know, it worked out all right. This is George Pierce. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. The doctors have concluded that William is in a permanent vegetative state. Oh, uh, well, you'll surprise him. Well, we'd like to believe that, but not this time. If the firm was stable, we'd have time to mourn, but it's not, and we don't. George has generously offered to take time from his busy practice to sort through the remaining cases and collect what's due. Well, I probably haven't had time to consider all the uh, you know, various ramifications of this. None of us have. I can't live on my accolades. Well, Lynn was hoping to give you and what's the receptionist's name? Vernita. Vernita Severance. But looking over the books, it just doesn't seem possible. I'll take over. <clears throat> no, you're not capable of continuing the practice. But 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 I, I'll take over because in the architecture of this firm, I am a pillar. Yes, and. Roman, I'd hope to reward you for that. Hope don't get the job done. What does that mean? That means hope don't get the job done. It was something I read where you talked about your people from Mount Vernon saying that, you know, like they've done like 40 years in a penitentiary together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and, you know, incarceration rates in America has been a problem, especially as opposing minorities. And Roman delves into this, the, the issues around the, the legal system. Do you think we've made any headway in the I think it's more important to make headway in our own house. By the time the system comes into play, the damage is done. They're not locking up seven-year-olds. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I was in Chicago a couple of three, four weeks ago, and we saw these little kids on bikes with masks on the side of their head, like five or six of them. And the driver said, yeah, they're little yummies. I said, who? He said, little, little yummies. Look up. Google little yummy. Mm. Lil Yummy was an 11-year-old murderer. Wow. And you look at his picture, you'll see the headshot of him, and he's like this. And he got murdered at 11 by a 14-year-old. Wow. Who's doing life now, and a 16-year-old. That makes no sense. You, you blame the system? Where was his father? Yeah. It starts in the house. It starts in the home. And yeah, well, well, my father got locked up. Well, where was his father? Yeah. You know? It, that, that, the, but like I, I did talk about my three closest friends, and they did, you know, 15 to 25, one did 28, this and that. I was the only one of the three that had a father in my life, even though my parents were together. But I still had a father who was a gentle man and a good example, yeah. and they didn't. We can blame the system if we want, but they didn't lock any of us up at seven. Yeah. We were all doing enough to get locked up at 13, my parents sent me in another direction. They didn't have anybody to help them, and they kept doing what they was doing, and the system got them. So, I, I don't. The, the system is rigged, but why? All the more reason not to help it. 
Speaking of fatherhood, Olivia, Malcolm, JD, all doing great things, and JD is now working with Spike Lee. Right, right now, yeah. The Black Klansman. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to know, like, have you, do you have any advice for him on working with Spike? We were talking this morning. We were talking for about an hour and a half this morning, and uh, I'm proud of them all. My daughter's doing uh, Shakespeare, Shaming, Taming of the Shrew in, in Chicago, and my other son is an AFI graduate, a Penn graduate, got a Morehouse graduate, an NYU graduate, a Yale graduate. You know, my wife did a great job. You know, uh, and uh, but to answer your question, yeah, we 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 you know, it's hard when you're father, you know. Yeah. Not to, I'm trying to stay out of it, <laughs> <laughs> but you're, I'm his father, you know. Yeah, yeah. But he but he asked me, you yeah. know, and I told him I said, man, roll with Spike. Spike, I learned how to really improvise and flow with Spike. Yeah. You know, with on Mo Better Blues and all the rest of them, and and he's learning that now, and uh, so I'm proud of them all. Appreciate the time, cool. brother. Right.